Hey you guys, welcome back to the channel Physics Sergi and here we are in JE Mains Debated Questions series wherein I bring the debated uh, and much talked about previous year's JE Mains questions. So we are going to have a JE Mains 2019 problem and this is a, a mixture of diffraction and interference and how to count maxima and also we'll all, uh, look through the question and see if there is any ambiguity in the language or the final key that is given by the JE. Okay, so here's the formal wording. I would request the serious aspirants to actually pause the video here, give it a try for one or two minutes and do come back for the concept explanation and also the final resolving of the ambiguity if at all any. Okay, so here I go with the formal reading. In a double slit experiment, green light of 5,303 angstroms falls on a double slit having a separation of 19.44 micrometer and a width of 4.05 micrometer. The number of bright fringes between the first and the second diffraction minima is, is given four options. You're supposed to choose one among them, okay? So let's try to introduce ourselves for the uninitiated about the parameters that are going to use in this particular video, which is very standard. In a standard YDSC, there will be a double slit whose distance between the slits is small d and the distance between the slit plane and the screen that you're going to use for the pattern to be observed is capital D. Plane wave fronts that are going to fall will have some wavelength of lambda and the width of each slit is a small letter A. Okay, we study this standard YDSC in JE advanced syllabus. Okay, what is the condition under which we study that? It's a special case where we take capital D is very large compared to small d and that itself is very large compared to wavelength. And the last important bit is that lambda is very large compared to A so that the spread is throughout the screen. Okay, A is the width of the slit. So we take very tiny width of the slit, almost incomparable in terms of the lambda. Then what happens in the JE main syllabus when we study diffraction as a single slit experiment, we relax that condition. So here we go with the concept. A lot of things on the screen, just follow my lead so that one by one we will be able to understand the things here. So the diagram first one on the left side of your screen represents the intensity or relative intensity on the screen from the center of the screen as you move outwards on the either side. Okay, so this is the upper side of the screen and this is the lower side you could call it here as we move up and down, someone has managed to draw the graph of intensity on the screen. So in a YDSC that I spoke of in the previous slide where capital D is very large compared to D, very large compared to lambda, very large compared to the width, you are taught usually that the intensity of the uh, fringes as we move along would be the same one. So you could see the first maxima or second maxima or third and so on so forth. The different ordered maxima are uh, arranged in a very equidistant manner. Not only that, the intensity of all these maxima are same, very familiar concept. Then what actually happens in a single slit is represented in this right side diagram on the top. In a single slit diffraction experiment, which is also named after Fraunhofer. So I'll be using the short form of FSSC, which is Fraunhofer single slit experiment. The lambda is actually comparable to A. Can you see the difference between these two conditions here? The lambda actually becomes comparable to A, wherein the intensity on the screen will not be uniform for the uh, subsidiary maximas, that maximas which are other than the central one. Central one is very strong, but as you go to the first maxima on the right side, you could see the uh, light actually, or the brightness falls very rapidly. And that's why we say most of the intensity or the light is in the central maximum region. Now what happens if I can take this condition of a single slit experiment and put it to the double slit? That means from each of the two slits, now the wavefronts would start coming out having this kind of a condition, right? So marrying these two is on paper, nothing but multiplying the two functions. And then you end up getting this particular function behaving like an envelope of this left-hand side 
condition similar to your beats in sound right so when product of two functions are taken that's why in your ncrt textbook or any standard physics book i have taken these diagrams from the resnick and halliday uh, textbook so you can go ahead and read through the concept it's a very important concept for your uh, je mains examination right also some people you can go ahead with your ncrt textbooks okay so the uh, it's almost like picking this particular curve and placing it inside this that's why this is called envelope of this one okay so diffraction curve becomes the envelope of the interference pattern as you could clearly visualize so that is the ydsc with this relaxed condition now the question if you go back and see is asking us to count the number of the minima or maxima or i should say number of brighter uh, fringes within the first minima and the second minima okay so first minima occurs somewhere here and the second minima will occur somewhere here in that how many of these small uh, uh, maximas are there that is what he's asking so if we go back to the wording the number of bright fringes between the first and the second diffraction minima is is what he's requesting us to calculate so with this concept away let's try to calculate that okay some more diagrams so i've tried to enlarge it a bit here you could see and since the diagram has been picked from resnick and alde for the sake of simplicity i've taken lambda for this particular diagram is equal to a by 10 okay so you could see that at point 1 you would end up having the minima how do you do that from center to the first diffraction minima center to the first diffraction minima we have a condition called a sin theta equal to lambda to the same position if i write the interference maxima conditions that is nothing but d sin theta equal to some m2 into lambda where m2 represents the order of the intensity maxima for interference okay so when these two have to simultaneously happen remember a sin theta is equal to lambda and d sin theta is equal to m2 lambda has to happen let's say at this particular position then the value of m2 when you substitute d and a in from the original question this d and this a if you substitute and divide you would end up getting 4.8 what does this mathematically mean it means that this particular order represents a 4.4.8 .4 order doesn't exist it's a number that will now play with it tells you that 1 2 3 and 4 maxima inside this particular uh, position of uh, d sin theta is equal to m2 lambda 4.8 means up to 4 is there 5 is not there inside this 5 would be on the right side so fourth interference maxima is inside but not the fifth is the condition from zero to the first minimum now from the center to the second diffraction minimum that right from here till the second diffraction minimum again i rewrite these conditions carefully a sin theta is this time 2 lambda and d sin theta is equal to m2 lambda again i'll end up getting obviously a 9.6 what does this 9.6 mean it means the fifth which was inside this now we can start counting continuously the sixth seventh and eighth and even ninth one will be available somewhere here but tenth one will go into the next one okay so counting them from fifth to ninth i think that gives us the answer that five maxima would be inside this it's very difficult to notice them so that's why resnick and halde zooms this one so that we can notice this fifth sixth seventh eighth and ninth which is five in number okay so now going back to the question what is the ambiguity here when someone asks you how many maxima are there in between the first order minimum and the second order minimum should we take on one side of the screen or the other side so that is where you are supposed to uh, ask yourself before doing that one more caution one some most of my students committed a mistake in this particular question during the exam is what they did is instead of counting from 0 to 4.8 here and again 0 to 9.6 here and then counting the in between there is a uh, chance that some students actually took this length directly as lambda by a then you end up getting if you divide this width in this fashion you will get 4.8 don't take the integral value of that 4.8 from here always start from the central maxima and count and count that there is 4.8 up till here so 4 will exist up till here and 0 to 9.6 up till here so 9 will exist here so since 5 starts from this side it should be counted from 5 to 9 and not the integral value of the 4.8 okay so that is the caution on the left hand side as you could see so from the uh, the value of this being lambda by a and the next one is also lambda by a, do not divide directly the angular width of the side peak so the first order and the second order minima the width itself is lambda by a right so this one 
this width is at this width which is also lambda by a don't divide that one directly with the angular fringe width of lambda by d what is angular fringe width of uh, interference maxima lambda by d don't directly divide and say 4.8 and do not take the integral value you may miss uh, one particular interference maxima so the answer is 5 and not 4 now should we count the uh, maxima in, inside both peaks on either side and answer it as 10 answer is no if you see that there is a small ambiguity in the question but if you uh, decipher it he said number of bright fringes between the first and the second diffraction minima that means he's only talking about one side okay yeah i i can understand some students argue that there is but the use of the and not a is the way yeah we are going to look at and answer it as fine and that's what the je final key was but they could have managed a better language. So Rizik and Halliday does that better right in his textbook. And I'll show you that language. So the better frame wording that I picked from the Rizik and Halliday solved example, you can go and check the section there, is how many bright fringes are within either of the first side peaks of the diffraction envelope. Maybe uh, NTA can take a cue from this and a future JE mains exam. They're very clear in this language because you could see some of the students actually went for 10. So if you are not careful, you may mark four, which is wrong answer. And if the language is ambiguous, you could actually mark in a double of five and put a 10. So the most commonly answered wrong keys are 10 and four, which you should be very careful in the future. Okay. I hope you understood the way it was done. In order to learn this concept in a more elaborate manner, try to read NCRT or Resnick Halliday and Walker on this particular concept. There's just two pages on it. It's very, very simple for an average student. Okay. So uh, for other day, JE mains debated questions, so please go through the uh, link of the playlist is in the description below and the other parallel series that are running in channel as usual. So please make sure you visit them and try to see those videos. Okay, and I'm happy to announce that this particular channel is now, now going to feature in the Feedspot's top 90 channels, uh, now on top 90 physics channels uh, feature. Okay, so this is a snapshot of that, one of the top 90 channels that they have recognized and link of that particular list of those 90 channels is in the description below, you can do check out the rest of the 90 channels which might help you in your preparation okay so please do like share and subscribe to this particular channel and try to go through the videos uh, maybe two or three if you're a serious aspirant uh, daily so that you can finish most of your revision um, wherein this particular uh, channel serves uh, things in a very unique and very elaborate manner okay so i hope you would love your journey through your channel and uh, see you in the next video